2 million miles. That's how far this Toyota engine ran before it was finally retired. Not for failure, they only took it apart to study why it wouldn't die. But this other Toyota engine, it exploded at just 87,000 miles. Same company, completely different outcome. Let me show you something that's going to change everything you think you know about modern cars. This is a 2JZ engine from a 1994 Toyota Supra. Look at the cross section of these cylinder walls. After 2 million miles, they still show perfect honing marks. The bearings? Original. The head gasket? Never replaced. This engine was literally built to outlast the car around it. Now look at this 2AZFE engine from a 2009 Camry. See that hole in the block? That's not from an accident. That's from a catastrophic internal failure at just 87,000 miles. A Toyota engine, the company that built its reputation on reliability, throwing a rod through the block before hitting 100,000 miles. Three weeks ago, I was in a shop in Wisconsin that specializes in Toyota engines. In one corner sat that legendary 2JZ pulled from a Supra with over 2 million documented miles. In the other corner, Five destroyed two AZ engines, all with similar failures, all under 100,000 miles. But here's what makes this story even more incredible. That two million mile engine? It wasn't babied. It wasn't some garage queen that only came out on sunny days. This engine powered a taxi in Germany for 15 years before being shipped to the US, where it continued running for another decade. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you exactly why one Toyota engine could run for 2 million miles, while another couldn't make it to 100,000. What I discovered about these engines reveals a dramatic shift in how cars are built, and why we might never see another engine capable of running for 2 million miles. But first, you need to understand what made this legendary engine virtually immortal. Because what Toyota did with the 2JZ wasn't just good engineering. It was automotive overkill on a level we'll probably never see again. Let's talk about what makes the 2JZ engine so special. But before I get into the engineering, you need to understand the context. In 1991, when Toyota was developing this engine, Japan was in its economic bubble. Companies weren't just competing on price, they were competing on engineering excellence. Cost wasn't the primary concern. Building the absolute best engine possible was. I recently interviewed Mike, the lead mechanic who took apart that 2 million mile 2JZ. What he found inside defied everything we know about engine wear. The cylinder walls still had their original cross hatching. The crankshaft journals showed minimal wear. Even the valve guides, parts that typically wear out by 200,000 miles, were still within factory specifications. But here's what makes this truly extraordinary. This engine wasn't just surviving at 2 million miles, it was thriving. On the dyno, it still produced within 5% of its original factory horsepower. Think about that. After 2 million miles, this engine was performing essentially the same as it did when it left the factory in 1994. The secret lies in what I call engineering overkill. Let me show you exactly what I mean. The cylinder walls on a 2JZ are nearly twice as thick as most modern engines. The crankshaft is forged steel strong enough to handle triple the factory horsepower. Even the head bolts are unnecessarily large. Toyota didn't just build this engine to meet requirements. They built it to exceed them in every way possible. I recently spoke with a former Toyota engineer who worked on the 2JZ project. He told me something fascinating. The production cost for each 2JZ engine was higher than some entire economy cars of the era. Toyota was literally losing money on every engine they built, but they didn't care. This wasn't about profit margins. It was about building something that would cement their reputation for decades to come. And it worked. That taxi in Germany with 2 million miles? It wasn't some anomaly. I've documented dozens of 2JZ engines with over 500,000 miles. Last month, I found one in Florida with 897,000 miles, still running the original head gasket. The owner's maintenance schedule? Nothing but oil changes every 5,000 miles. But perhaps the most telling evidence of this engine's immortality comes from the tuning community. While most engines grenade themselves at double their factory horsepower, the 2JZ can handle triple, quadruple, even quintuple its original output without breaking a sweat. Why? Because every component was built with massive safety margins. Let me show you the oil passages in this engine. 
See how large they are? Modern engines have passages half this size. The bearing surfaces, nearly twice the area of contemporary designs. The cooling passages, so oversized that the engine barely breaks a sweat even under extreme conditions. This wasn't just good engineering. This was engineering without compromise. Every single component was built to handle far more stress than it would ever see in normal use. It's like Toyota designed this engine to run forever, then doubled every safety margin just to be sure. But here's what makes this story truly remarkable. They did all this in an era before computer-aided design, before finite element analysis, before modern manufacturing techniques. They overbuilt this engine using old-school engineering principles and an absolute dedication to quality. And the results speak for themselves. That two million mile engine? When they finally took it apart, it wasn't because it failed. It was because they couldn't believe it was still running so perfectly after all those miles. Now, let's fast forward to 2007 and look at what I call Toyota's engineering identity crisis. The 2AZFE engine. And let me be clear, this isn't just about one bad engine. This is about a fundamental shift in how cars are built and why we'll probably never see another 2 million mile engine again. I'm standing in front of a 2009 Camry with just 87,000 miles on it. Listen to this engine. Hear that knocking? That's the sound of a $4,000 repair bill coming. But what's truly shocking isn't that this engine failed. It's that Toyota knew about these problems and kept building them anyway. Let me show you exactly what goes wrong. This is a rod bearing from that destroyed 2AZ engine I mentioned earlier. See how it's completely worn away? This isn't normal wear. This is catastrophic failure. And it's not just this one engine. I've documented over 30 cases of 2AZ engines failing in exactly the same way, all between 80,000 and 120,000 miles. Last week, I visited a Toyota specialist in Texas. In his shop sat six 2AZ engines, all with holes in the block all from different cars, all with similar mileage, all with the same failure point. He told me something disturbing. He sees more blown 2AZ engines than all other Toyota engines combined. But here's what makes this situation truly tragic. The fix for this problem would have cost Toyota less than $100 per engine. Better rod bearings, stronger oil control rings, and slightly tighter manufacturing tolerances. That's all it would have taken. Instead, they chose to save money on components that were literally the difference between an engine lasting 80,000 miles or 300,000 miles. I recently interviewed a former Toyota quality control engineer who worked during this period. He told me that every decision came down to cost. Where the 2JZ was built with unlimited budget for quality, the 2AZ was built to a strict price point. Every component was designed to meet minimum specifications, not exceed them. The results are painfully obvious. Look at these oil consumption tests. A 2JZ at 500,000 miles. Zero oil consumption between changes. A 2AZ at 80,000 miles. Burning a quart every 1,000 miles. But it gets worse. The 2AZ doesn't just fail. It fails spectacularly. When these engines go, they don't just stop running. They throw rods through the block destroying everything around them. I've seen cases where the failure was so violent, it damaged the transmission, the subframe, even the steering rack. And the timing of these failures? Almost cruel. Most happen just outside the warranty period, leaving owners with repair bills that often exceed the value of their car. I recently met Sarah in California. Her 2007 Camry's engine failed at 98,000 miles, just 2,000 miles after the warranty expired. The repair quote, $4,800. This isn't just about poor engineering. It's about a complete departure from Toyota's traditional values. The company that built an engine capable of running for 2 million miles was now building engines that couldn't reliably reach 100,000. But perhaps the most frustrating part of this whole situation is Toyota's response. Despite thousands of complaints, despite class action lawsuits, despite overwhelming evidence of systemic problems, they continued building these engines with minimal changes until 2011. Let me show you something that perfectly illustrates what changed between these two engines. This is a connecting rod from the 2JZ. Notice the weight, the thickness, the quality of the forging. Now look at this connecting rod from the 2AZ. The difference isn't subtle, it's shocking. 
I recently put both these components on a scale. The 2JZ rod, 750 grams of forged steel. The 2AZ, 460 grams of sintered metal. That's not just a difference in weight. It's a fundamental difference in philosophy. One was built to last forever. The other was built to last just long enough. But the real story isn't in the parts you can see. It's in the engineering decisions you can't. I had both these engines analyzed by a metallurgist, and what he found was fascinating. The cylinder walls of the 2JZ are made from a higher grade iron alloy with almost twice the silicon content. This means better wear resistance, better heat dissipation, and ultimately, longer life. The 2AZ, standard grade iron, minimal silicon content, thinner walls. It's not that Toyota forgot how to build good engines. They deliberately chose to build them cheaper. Let me show you the oil passages. In the 2JZ, they're oversized by almost 40%. This means better oil flow, better cooling, better lubrication under all conditions. The 2AZ's oil passages are sized to minimum specifications. They work fine when the engine is new, but as soon as any wear occurs, oil pressure drops and the problems cascade. The bearing surfaces tell an even more dramatic story. The 2JZ uses larger bearings with more surface area and higher grade materials. The 2AZ, smaller bearings, less surface area, cheaper materials. It's like comparing a highway to a dirt road. Both will get you there, but one's built for the long haul. I recently spoke with Tom, a Toyota master technician with 30 years of experience. He told me something that really stuck with me. The 2JZ was built with the mindset that money was no object. The 2AZ was built with the mindset that every cent counted. Look at the cooling system design. The 2JZ has additional water jackets around every cylinder, ensuring even cooling under all conditions. The 2AZ, basic cooling channels that meet minimum requirements. When these engines get hot, they stay hot, and that accelerates wear. Even the assembly process was different. The 2JZ was built in Japan in a dedicated facility where each engine was assembled by hand. The 2AZ, mass-produced with minimal human intervention. Again, not necessarily bad, but a clear indication of different priorities. But here's what really tells the story. The safety margins. Every component in the 2JZ was designed to handle far more stress than it would ever see in normal use. The 2AZ. Everything was designed to handle exactly what it was expected to see, with minimal margin for error. When conditions aren't perfect, and in the real world they rarely are, that's when things start to break. So what happened? How did Toyota go from building engines that could run for 2 million miles to engines that couldn't make it past 100,000? The answer reveals a dramatic shift in the entire automotive industry. In 1991, when the 2JZ was being developed, Toyota was spending an astronomical $1,700 just to manufacture each engine. For perspective, that's more than some car companies spend on an entire engine today. But something changed in the late 1990s a fundamental shift in how cars were built. I recently uncovered an internal Toyota document from 2005 that tells the whole story. It outlined a new manufacturing philosophy called cost down, value up. Sounds good on paper, right? But look what happened in practice. The cost to manufacture the 2AZ engine? Just $650, less than half what they spent on the 2JZ. But here's where it gets really interesting. I spoke with a former Toyota executive who worked during both eras. He told me something shocking. The pressure to reduce costs wasn't coming from Toyota Japan. It was coming from the American market. Americans wanted cheaper cars, and they were willing to sacrifice longevity to get them. Think about these numbers. In 1993, the average new car cost about 27 weeks of median income. By 2007, manufacturers were trying to get that down to 20 weeks. Something had to give and that something was engineering tolerance. Let me show you exactly what this means in practice. This is a cylinder head from a 2JZ. Notice the thickness of the casting, the quality of the material. Now look at this 2AZ cylinder head. The walls are thinner, the material is lighter, everything is designed to minimize cost rather than maximize longevity. But the real tragedy isn't just that engines became cheaper to build, it's that the entire philosophy of engineering changed. 
The 2JZ was built with the mindset that every engine should be capable of running forever. The 2AZ was built with the mindset that an engine only needs to last through the warranty period. I recently found a quote from a Toyota engineer from 1991. He said, We build each engine as if it were going into our own car. By 2007, the mandate had changed to build to specification, nothing more. This shift wasn't unique to Toyota. Every manufacturer was facing the same pressures. Build it cheaper, make it lighter, reduce costs wherever possible. The era of over-engineered engines was over, replaced by an age of precision engineering to minimum specifications. But here's the real kicker. This change actually made financial sense for car companies. When engines last too long, people don't buy new cars. When they fail just after the warranty expires, guess what happens? People are forced back into the new car market. So, what can you do to protect yourself? Whether you're looking at a used Toyota or any modern car, there are specific things you need to watch for. And I've developed a system that's helped thousands of my subscribers avoid buying ticking time bombs. First, you need to understand that not all Toyota engines from the same era are created equal. While the 2AZ was grenading itself across America, Toyota was still building some incredibly reliable engines. The difference? Knowing which is which. I've spent the last decade documenting which engines last and which ones fail, and what I've discovered is fascinating. There are still some modern Toyota engines that are built like tanks, but you won't find this information in any buyer's guide or consumer report. That's why I've started sending my subscribers weekly updates about specific engines to avoid and which ones to seek out. Just last month, I helped three viewers avoid buying cars with known engine problems and helped five others find vehicles that will likely run for 500,000 miles or more. But here's the thing. This information changes constantly. As more data comes in, as more patterns emerge, the list of good and bad engines keeps evolving. That's why you need to stay informed. So here's what I want you to do right now. Hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell. Next week, I'm releasing my complete guide to Toyota engines, including the modern Toyota engines that are still built to last, the specific years and models to avoid, the hidden signs of impending engine failure, and most importantly, how to find the good ones. Plus, I'm going to show you another Toyota engine that just hit 1.5 million miles, and it's not the one you're thinking of. Drop a comment below telling me which Toyota engine you want me to analyze next. I read every comment, and I'll make sure to cover the most requested engines in upcoming videos. Remember, knowledge isn't just power, it's the difference between buying a car that lasts 80,000 miles and one that lasts 800,000 miles. Subscribe now, and let's make sure your next engine is one of the good ones.